All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a new Life After Navy video. And in the last video, I talked about some things that I miss about being in the Navy. But today, we're going to be talking about some things that I don't miss about being in the Navy. So, as with the last video, there was a lot of things to like about my time in the service. But there were also an equal amount of things, if not more, that I didn't like about being in the service. And these are in no particular order, these are just some off the top of my head here. So let's get right into the things. Keemstar. <laughs> anyway, so first thing I don't miss is having a very scripted career. And um, I know some old salts and uh, stuff like that who have been in for a hot minute may have certain feelings about my opinions of, you know, stepping up as a second class so you know just be sure to hear me out first before sending those nasty comments you know raptors raptors <laughs> being a, uh, a second class sonar tech sdg2 you are expected to uh, basically be at a work center soup level so um, as an e5 typically for those who are looking to advance to e6 uh, be a first class you would assume the role of a work center supervisor, which is basically kind of like uh, assistant manager or something like that. That's the relative equivalent, you know, in civilian ease. You would basically lead the maintenance and all that kind of stuff and basically be like an assistant LPO or assistant manager in dealing with the division. But being in CA division, um, we only at the time had one work center and uh, Later on, near the end of my time there, they split into two, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> but in any event, uh, one work center only needed one work center soup. And being in CA, uh, sonar techs at the time got advanced very quickly. So there was always a good amount of second classes within the division. So there was a lot of people vying for that work center soup spot so that, that way they could get a good eval if they decided to take the first class exam or re-enlist to take the exam or whatever the case may be. So I felt uh, knowing that I wasn't going to make the Navy my career, I wanted to get out, pursue a higher education and move on from there. I felt that since I wasn't going to re-enlist, since I wasn't going to be around long enough to take the first class exam, I felt that taking that work center soup position would have taken away an opportunity for um, a junior sailor who wanted to advance and wanted to, you know, move on up, you know, in the Navy and, you know, possibly make the Navy their career. So, you know, being as there was only one work center, one work center soup, um, I decided to just, you know, step back from that leadership role so that way somebody else who was much better at dealing with those sorts of things could take control of that. And his eval certainly. Uh, reflected a lot better because of those things and I know some people might think oh you just were being lazy uh, you are just being a shit bag you know you didn't care about the Navy or any of that other stuff and it's just that I wanted to provide more opportunities for junior sailors even at the cost of my own eval and my own career for the most part in the Navy so it is what it is and now that I'm out you know it's it's whatever but uh, that's just kind of how I felt and plus being forward deployed and being a second class I kind of learned a little bit about uh, the career path that I would take if I did decide to re-enlist you know before the whole weight thing kind of came into being I kind of looked into the possibility of re-enlisting and like what would what would my life be like if I decided to re-enlist and go for first class and all this kind of stuff? And I just kind of shadowed a lot of first classes and stuff like that. And I didn't really see myself in that role, assuming all those responsibilities and being that type of person. You know, it just didn't really seem for me, really. So I decided to just kind of step back and then things kind of fell into place to where I was able to get out and you know, here we are today. <laughs> so it is what it is. And uh, the next thing we're gonna get into is the amount of stress 
in being in the Navy. The stress of being four deployed was probably the worst I've ever experienced in my life. And, you know, some people, they can handle it pretty well. You know, they got family members to keep them grounded and to give them focus and reason to come back when they uh, return to home port and stuff like that. And that's really cool. But for me, being a single guy, the only thing I missed was my bed and my shower in my nice deep Japanese tub, which was fucking dope, gotta say. But I didn't really have any of that support network as far as, you know, outside of work support network, really. I mean, I had my friends and stuff, but they were, they were out in Tokyo and surrounding areas, and, you know, they really couldn't relate to a lot of uh, stresses that I was under being in the Navy, because, you know, a lot of them were English teachers and stuff like that, so their stresses were a lot different than mine out in Japan, actually. I don't know if I discussed this in previous videos, but I suffered uh, panic attacks out there. And I remember one time I got called back in because uh, eventually when I came back to the ship to figure out what we got called back for, it was just because the space wasn't clean, so you know, whatever, but I was still kind of pissed about it. When I heard that we were getting called back, you know, it was a it was an already stressful day. And when I got the call, I just froze. And uh, I, my mind was just completely locked and I was, I felt paralyzed mentally. And it's just such a, such a bad experience. And also it didn't help that I drank a lot out there too, because that was, you know, not exactly the healthiest coping mechanism out there, but you know, I, I felt very trapped being in that environment, which you know sucked because I loved being in Japan. I just didn't like being in the Navy in Japan because it was just too damn stressful for me. And like I said, some people can deal with the stress and that's fine, but for me, it was just too much. And I'm happy to say now I'm a lot less is stressed out about things. I'm stressed out about different things than I was in the Navy, but not not nearly to the degree that I was being out there. And like, <laughs> as far as drinking goes, I hardly drink at all, actually. Like, I have some, some stuff stocked away, but, you know, I've been sober for months now, really. I really haven't had the urge to drink at all, so. You don't have to worry about alcoholism or any of that other stuff, but. That's just kind of what I was experiencing at the time, and I sure as hell don't miss it. So the next thing is uh, redundancy and repetition, just to kind of fit in with the theme there. And so uh, being in the Navy, you know, for a couple years, you see a lot of um, the same training exercises and the same training regimens and, you know, the leadership talking about the same thing over and over and over and over again, and it's just, ugh. It just gets so damn annoying. And there's some times where I understand because, you know, we constantly get new people coming in, so they got to get trained up too. So I get that. But still to have us constantly go over the same shit over and over again, it's just so frustrating. And, you know, to constantly be told all those things, it's just, ugh. I just, you know, maybe a couple times and have a refresher every once in a while and I'm good. But that's just me, so. <laughs> anyway, the last thing we're going to talk about is uh, being punished for the actions of others whom you have no control over. So, um, at the time of this recording, uh, a couple months ago, there was an incident out in Okinawa where a sailor apparently was drunk driving and uh, hit some people. And because of that, they banned the use of alcohol in all of 7th Fleet, which consists of Japan, pretty much. So any uh, Japan-based sailor was prohibited from drinking at all. And they, you know, for the first couple weeks, they were even limited to not leaving base or only going to their residence, except for very strict uh, conditions, like, you know, going to pay utilities, get groceries, um, work out, stuff like that. So it was very, very strict. And I think now 
they've lifted a lot, if not all of those uh, restrictions. But stuff like that happens from time to time. And I remember when I first came out to Japan, they were just starting to lift a lot of those types of restrictions as well. So, you know, every day we would have to write like a liberty plan, what we plan to do when we're out in town and stuff like that. And it just kind of got so annoying because, like, you know, before I got my place, I never drank out in town, really, except for maybe divisional outings and stuff like that. But I was with people higher ranked than me, so it was okay. You know, and I never really drank to the point where people would have to be like, all right, all right, calm down. <laughs> you know, I was very, very careful about how much I drank, even though I did drink a lot. You know, I knew it could handle it, so I never really got too out of hand. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, I just hated, you know, being punished for something I couldn't control. And it wasn't anything, you know, it wasn't my fault, you know. It wasn't like I went out drunk driving, hit somebody, and was being punished because obviously I, I deserved it because I was out doing stupid shit so obviously I would get punished for it but some other person who wasn't even part of your division or your command or was it wasn't even on the same area that you were because you know Yokosuka is close to Tokyo and Okinawa is way 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 south of that so it wasn't like they were out in the same place and acting a fool and you know you couldn't just go in there and be like hey you know shit mate calm down you know, I had absolutely no control over something like that. And I just felt so bad for everybody who was stationed out there. You know, especially especially the ones who, you know, are following the rules, not being stupid. And, you know, they may or may not have families, but in any event, just the ones that are, you know, constantly doing the right thing and doing good. And they still get punished because somebody else decided to do something stupid. And that to me is like, just, <laughs> even though I said I wouldn't rank these as like, you know, which one's the number one re thing you don't miss or whatever. I think that is definitely the number one thing I don't miss about being in the Navy. Being punished for the actions of others and for something that you couldn't control or anything. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. So with that said, this is the Andy Song, signing up for now, thanking you guys, Poop, for tuning into this video and for watching my other stuff. And I uh, also want to thank you guys for liking, all the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party. And hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.